Today, we are making tacos al pastor with sliced pineapple on the rotisserie. My name's Angela with KamadoCook.com. If you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button. If you've been here before, sorry I'm not better looking. Today, we are making tacos al pastor on the rotisserie. You've seen me do it before. I'm gonna change it up a little bit. I do this very often, and every time I make it, I do a few little tweaks, I change it up a little bit, and I think I finally have it absolutely 100% perfect. So what we're gonna do is, I bought these, um, these are bone-in pork chops essentially, but they're very thinly sliced. And this is the exact thickness that we need for the rotisserie. So I have to cut the bones out, and we'll do that in a second. Then we're gonna marinate them overnight in this al pastor sauce. You can make your own al pastor seasoning or sauce or marinade. It's complicated. There's like 15 ingredients. You gotta grind some of it up. There's fruits involved. It's, it's legitimately complicated. If you watch this channel, you know I like to do things easy but taste great. This is exactly that. This is phenomenal. It's a couple of bucks. It's just an awesome flavor and um, it's already made. Every now and then I'll throw in some pineapple juice in the marinade just to add a little more, you know, sweet pop, but it's it's great as is. Um, and then we're gonna slice up this pineapple and put it all in the skewer. But for now, since this is marinating overnight and we're actually cooking this tomorrow, what I wanna do is I wanna take all these bones off. And I got my glove on the wrong hand. I wanna take all these bones off so we just have the nice clean meat. Then we're gonna cut it into even sections so that when we stack it on the skewer, it cooks evenly. So for now, I'm gonna remove the bones and we'll be right back. All right, so I've removed the bones from my thinly sliced pork chops and I've gotten my pieces as evenly sized as possible. Now what we need to do is marinate it overnight. As I mentioned, and this is gonna get dirty because we're using the whole thing. As I mentioned, I used thin sliced pork chops um, that ha they happen to have bone in, so I just removed the bones. But if you, um, you can buy a pork shoulder and just slice it thin and, and do it that way. And you want maybe quarter of inch thickness. So whatever pork you get will be fine. Just don't get something super, um, super fat or with a lot of like, uh, with a lot of tendons or anything like that. Because we do want, um, you know, we want to be able to shave it nice and evenly. And if there's like tendons and intermuscular fat, a lot of it, the shaving could get a little weird. So we um, we have our pork in the bag here, just a very large um, Ziploc bag will do the trick. And we're gonna close it up, mix it up, and then we'll let it sit overnight. So let's mix this around. We want these coated completely, and we're just gonna let it marinate overnight. Nothing to it, not overly complicated. Just wanna make sure all the pieces are evenly coated. All right, got everything loaded. It's all covered in the marinade. All I need to do now is put it in the fridge and that's it. Then we'll come back tomorrow, we'll load up the rotisserie, we'll cook it, we'll shave as we go and we're gonna have amazing tacos. So um, we have our al pastor sauce in here. I'll put the link in the description. If you have some orange juice or some pineapple juice and you wanna put a splash in that in here as well, that will enhance some of the flavors and it's a great addition. So I left it exactly as is, but by all means add a fruit juice, add some citrus and it'll come out really well. So you'll see me again tomorrow when it's time to load up the rotisserie. All right, so we've got our fire lit for the tacos al pastor. It hasn't caught yet, so I'm still letting this, this fully catch. Right, these, right now, these giant flames you see are just the fire starters. We have our coals banked to the back, and the reason we do that is when we're doing rotisserie, you know, you need to give that meat a break, so you don't just want constant heat, constant heat, and then also, by banking the coals, you prevent flare-ups. So if your rotisserie is dripping directly onto coals, you know, the likelihood of flare-ups are, are much higher. So I like to bank them. I have a kick ash basket, so I have the divider, which makes it super simple. If you don't have that, you can kind of just do it with your hand. You also see I have the accessory rack in here, and I'll go over more of that later. But the reason I have this in here is when we take the meat off and we shave it, 
it's very likely that some of our cuts, there'll be some raw pork in there. So if that happens, I leave the accessory rack so I can throw a tin foil tray on here and then just throw that, that meat I cut into that tray and just let it cook up a little more. Now, if we come look over here, one of the number one questions I see is, I don't get a good seal. I don't get a good seal on my Kamano Joe or there's an air gap in my Kamano Joe. If you look here, this is very, there's a lot of wiggle room here, okay? So for my Joe, this needs to be pulled all the way forward. Because if I push it all the way back and I close my lid, it's not as tight of a seal. So for me personally, I pull it all the way forward and that's a nice tight seal in the back and in the front. So if you're struggling and you see big gaps with a lot of smoke coming out or air gaps, move this around left to right, front to back until you get it where you want. The next tip is when we're doing our skewer, this is going to be a hot fire. So the last thing I want to do is messing with these prongs over a hot fire. So what we want to do is we want to loosen these prongs up. And another tip is get the, um, get the bolts on the same side. So I want to loosen these up. I'm going to pop this in here. And then I want this first skewer or this first claw or whatever towards the middle, right? We want to make this, we want to make our Al Pastor in the middle of this fire. So I like to put it on before this fire is very hot and then we'll lock this one into place. And now I know when we build it inside, we're gonna to be towards the middle. And I'm not messing with it over a hot fire trying to center it. So we're good for now. I'm gonna close this lid, let this come up. We're looking for 500 degrees. So we'll let this come up to temperature and now let's go inside and build our uh, Al Pastor. All right, now it's time to build our skewer. What we have to do here is make sure we build this as evenly as possible. You'll notice I have tin foil everywhere or aluminum foil everywhere. That's because I've ruined more than one cutting board doing this. So this stuff stains, um, it's an intense color. So uh, I like to do it over tin foil or I keep going with tin foil, aluminum foil because it's easy to clean up and, and uh, you know ball up and throw away. So it's this is the easiest thing in the world. We're just gonna load this up. And as I've mentioned many times, the key is to make it as even as possible because if it's not even, and if you have pieces that are hanging off, and you know, let's say we put this like, like here, this bottom piece, this bottom piece is gonna burn up. So we wanna make sure we load it evenly so that some pieces don't burn up and we get as much usable, cooked, proper meat out of this when it's all said and done. So I'm gonna keep loading this. I'm gonna make it as uniform as I can and then we'll go ahead and uh, get it on the grill. So we've got it loaded up somewhat evenly and now what I need to do is tighten this as much as possible. So we're gonna push it nice and tight and then lock it in. The reason I want it packed up tight is so that when I'm cutting it, you know, as it cooks, it's gonna shrink. And when I'm cutting it, I don't want room, it'll be moving instead of slicing. So we want it nice and tight so that if it cooks up and shrinks, it's still tight. In all likelihood, along the way, I'm gonna have to tighten it again. But for now, we're good. This is solid, it's pretty even. This is actually one of the better jobs I've done. It's pretty even, we still have a few pieces that are hanging, like right here, that'll just burn up. We'll, we'll get that off first, it's not a big deal. So let's go outside, we'll get this on, and then uh, we'll start to shave. We've got it loaded up. Um, it's not completely centered. But for now, it's good. If we see it's cooking unevenly, I'll shift it over a bit. And there is some wiggle room here where it still stays in the, in the prod there. So we're going to let this go. If you look over here, I have a nice even fire. When it was coming up, it actually was not even. It was much hotter on one side. So I used my ash tool and moved it over because you need it evenly, you know, because that's how it's going to cook. So let's close this lid. Well, actually, let's turn this on. We'll close this lid. As this cooks, as we see some cooked pieces, we're gonna take it off, we'll shave it into our tray, and then we'll just rinse and repeat. So uh, we're probably not gonna have to come back for about 20 minutes or so until this first round is done. All right, let's give this a look. And we're about ready to cut. So you see here the pieces that were a little uneven, like this piece hanging down, we get some char on there. 
But you know what? I actually love those pieces because once we slice into it and mix it all together, those little crunchy charred bits are just the perfect accent. Obviously, I have my high heat gloves on. This is literally an impossible task without it. Um, so we're just gonna cut down. The trick here is to not cut too much. We just wanna cut this outer layer for the parts that we know are done. And the reason I have the accessory rack in there is if I cut too much and I'm seeing some pink, you know, I'm gonna flip this over so it's a little easier to cut. Um, and if I cut too much and I see some pink, I'm just gonna leave it in this tray and put this tray on our accessory rack and that'll cook it right up. So you see, we use these high heat gloves. The reason I love these so much is because you saw how I touched the meat. So I'm gonna get some sauce on my hands and it's gonna get on the gloves and these are washable. I can clean these, I can wash these. It's not gonna absorb this. They're not gonna stink. They're not gonna get gross or moldy. People always recommend, anytime I see somebody say, what high heat gloves should I get? Somebody always says welding gloves. And you know what? Welding gloves are great for touching the fire and things like that, but not food. I would never want this sauce to get on welding gloves because you can't clean those. It'll just absorb it and they'll just get absolutely disgusting. So I'll have a link in the description. These are super cheap and they work really, really well. Another thing, if you notice in the beginning, it was a little tricky to cut and that's because it's not fully cooked. We just did that one little thin outer layer. There's not a lot of meat that came off of that, but we just need to get this even and uniform. The first cut is always tricky. The more we go, the more we cut, the tighter it will be and the easier that knife will go because the meat is cooked. If I cut too much, and let's look in here to see if I have any raw pieces. So that's obviously cooked. So I think I did okay. Yeah, I did. I don't see any pieces here that were raw. But if I cut too much and we had a little bit of a raw piece, I would just take this whole tray. I would just take that whole tray and put it on the accessory rack and let that heat from the fire heat up the tray and cook it. So we're just going to keep doing this. That first shave took about 20 minutes to get to that point. Now it's probably going to be about every 10 or 15, but we'll look at it. Anytime that outer layer is done, we'll come back, we'll shave it. And then over and over and over and over until we have nothing left. So pretty easy. It's a lot of fun. You have a drink, you hang outside, you shave as you go, and it's a good time. But uh, we'll be back in 10 more minutes and see what happens. We messed up. We forgot to put the pineapple. So we did it backwards. Luckily, I have the high heat gloves. So what I've done is we took it off. I took this completely out. I just took off one of the prongs, shoved the pineapple, put the prong back in, took off a prong, shoved the pineapple, put the prong back in. Ideally, ideally you do that when you build it in the beginning. I completely forgot about it until I did that first shave and I was like, where that? This is delicious. Where the hell is the pineapple? So easy enough. When you do it, do it correctly. Shove two big chunks of pineapple on the prong, then load it up with meat, two pieces of pineapple, and then the prong. And that pineapple will just sandwich it all together nice and help keep it uniform. And as we, as it cooks and as we shave, we're gonna cut that pineapple as well. So no big deal. We missed 20 minutes of pineapple cook, but it'll be fine. So I messed up, but if you mess up and you make the same mistake, you can do what I did. Just take it off quickly with your high heat gloves, put pineapple on there and then put those ends back on. Um, the reason you like to do the pineapple is two things. One, it's delicious. Two, it's solid and flat and it's very easy to push that meat nice and tight together. So, you know, Anytime we do these cooks or you do these cooks, it's never always perfect. So this time you got to see how obvious, <laughs> obviously, um, you know, the mistake that we made. But luckily, we'll recover well. So we're going to let this keep going. Same exact plan. Every 10, 15 minutes, we'll come back. We'll shave some more off. All right, this is shave number three. Number two, after our pineapple mistake. So now we're actually going to include some pineapple in the cut. And as usual, just work our way down. All right, you see, you see all this movement here? I need to tighten this up. And again, this is why these gloves in particular are great because, there we go, because it can touch the food and they're not gonna get all gross because I can wash them later. So let's keep cutting, see how much easier it, and nicer it cuts, um, the tighter that they're that everything's together. Because as you cook the pork, it's going to shrivel up. Obviously, it'll shrink. 
them shrivel. So you'll have to tighten a few times throughout your, your cook. So just a lot more of this. We'll cut as we go. Eventually, this will be too thin to do this way. And when that happens, um, we just take the whole thing off and chop it up. All right, it is our fifth and final shave. Uh, overall, it's a pretty straightforward cook. Just don't forget the pineapple. That was our mistake, but hey, you learn when you go. So um, the process, just to review, is you want to marinate your thinly sliced pork. You don't want pork that's overly fatty because that will either cause flare-ups or be too chewy when you eat it. But we marinate your thinly sliced pork overnight in the al pastor sauce. Then the next day, we, we loaded it up onto our skewer in nice, even pieces. I forgot the pineapple, but then we added it after. So you want to make sure you have some nice, thick-cut pieces of pineapple sort of sandwiching uh, your pork together on the ends so that when we tighten those skewers and um, you know, we really grit it in there and cinch it, there's some nice flat surfaces to keep it compact, which will help with cutting. Then we loaded it on here at 500 degrees. The first shave took about 20 minutes. After that, it was about 10 to 15, but essentially we just go off of look and feel. We want some nice charred pieces. We wanna make sure that whole outer layer is cooked and then we cut as we go. If you accidentally cut too much and you have a little bit of raw pork, we leave it in our tray, we put the tray inside the grill and we let that cook up and make sure it's not raw anymore. Super easy, nice little trick that I use because you know inevitably you'll cut one or two pieces that, that are still a little raw. Um, as you cook, the pork will shrink and your, your, your skewer will get a little loose and it'll be even harder to cut. So that's why we loosened it and we pushed it together even tighter and then tightened it back up. It's an easy process, it's a straightforward process, and it's a lot of fun. So the downside to a cook like this is it's not all done at the exact same time, right? We're shaving as we go. So some of it's done, you know, quickly, and then you're not all completely done till about, you know, half hour, an hour is probably the whole process. So this is great for a barbecue. You got people over, you're cutting as you go, people are making it as you go, or you make it, you cut it, and then you put it aside, you heat it up later. Or again, you can cut the first layers a little early and keep it inside of the grill to keep cooking. So you have a bunch of different options, but it is a ton of fun. It's great if you're having a drink and you have some few, a few people over and it's, uh, you know, everybody likes to gather around and watch. So thanks for the like, the subscribe, and let's come in here and we'll take a look at the last cut of the day. So as I mentioned, once you get to a certain point, it's a little harder to cut and eventually we'll be done. So I think this is gonna be our last cut. And then this rest of it will just come off, we'll chop it up because it's already cooked. Yeah, so we're done here. You see this is fully cooked all the way inside. So we don't need to put this back on, but I am gonna keep cutting it while it's on the skewer because that will keep my pieces nice and even. So let's try it without burning my mouth. Fantastic. I'll link in the description to that rub that we use or the marinade we use. It's unbelievable. Al Pastor marinade is actually pretty complicated. So to get one pre-made that's this good is is the way to go for sure. So we're going to eat. This is great. Thanks for the watch. I appreciate it. If you have any questions, let me know. And you saw it's trial and error. We messed up. We forgot the pineapple. We put it back on. We finished. And then this ended up great. So it's not always perfect. Anybody out there that makes everything look perfect is editing the hell out of their videos. So I appreciate it. Let me know if you have any questions. And thanks for the watch.